Hello everyone, Master Xeon 101 here, and in this video we'll be going over the changes that have taken place for HardOps 987 underscore 15. You might be looking at this release log and think, wow, this one is really short compared to the usual ones. Well, typically every couple of releases or so we like to just do a bug fix round where we just go through and clean up things and ensure that everything's continuing to work as smooth as possible before we continue moving forward. So that is what this update is. Hopefully users will still be able to find the benefits of what this update has to offer since it does fix a few just loose ends that were left over. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So here we are in 2.83.16 LTS. If we press Q, we see that we're using an older version of hard ops. So what I want to show in this older version of hard ops is basically if we were to select this object and duplicate it and then we decided we want to mirror this cube across this cube we would select both and press alt x while we're mirroring across we see that the gizmo looks correct so we click and we've completed our operation however what if i wanted to select just this object and then press alt x to make modifications well we see that the gizmo location is incorrect we're actually mirroring across this object which is where the gizmo should appear and that in general is the gist of this issue. However, if we were to delete this object and we pressed Alt X and we looked at it from this view, but instead we wanted to mirror according to this view, we could press V to change the mirror over to view. And then when we mirror across, we've now mirrored across the view. In fact, if we turn on wireframe, we can see that we perfectly mirrored across. However, if I press Alt X, and we bring the mirror modifier up again for edit and we press X to reset it. So we're basically modifying the mirror modifier that's currently existing. We see that the orientation of the gizmo has been reset, basically making it more difficult for me to tell, maybe I want to mirror on the Z, maybe I want to mirror on the Y. And with the gizmo incorrect, it's just hard to tell exactly what's going on there. So let us minimize this and let's go to the current version of Blender where we have hardops 987.15 and if we were to shift D duplicate this object and shift select this object and we were to choose to press alt x to mirror across this object because we're in modifier we can just click y to mirror this across if we select this object and we were to choose hey we want to modify that mirror that we just added we could press alt x and we see that the gizmo is in the correct place and it's actually oriented correctly too so we can choose that we want to keep the X, we can Alt X, we can bring it up again, and we could choose, hey, we want to keep the Z. And when we click the Z, we see that we mirrored on the Z. So that's the gist of the improvements that we aimed for with this particular update. You know, nothing major, but the gizmo being off really drove me crazy. So if we press X and delete this, let's select the object, and we're just looking at it from a three quarters angle. We'll press numpad five to look at it head on. If we press Alt X, and we press V in order to mirror from view, we've now set up basically a view mirror. But what this also means is that if we press Alt X and we press X to reset back to modifier, which means that we're modifying the currently existing mirror, then we see that it's also now oriented to the empty that allowed us to first mirror from view, meaning that whenever I hold shift and I click Y, to keep the gizmo active we see that we get an accurate result and if i click z we see that we see exactly what we're getting here so if i press alt x we can undo on the z and we can also undo on the y taking us back to x meaning that basically if we were to begin cutting we're cutting on both sides of this mirrored object one issue that drove me crazy involved mirror smart apply clone and wire display and so here we are in an older version of hard ops and box cutter using Dot 14, the last release. And to show this in action, I'm just going to tab into edit mode, select this edge, control click mark in order to bevel this edge. And then from here, we're just going to mirror this to the other side. If I were to select this and shift click smart apply to get a clone, and we go in edit mode and we press I to inset, and we were to press control I to select everything else and we deleted it, let's say I wanted to mirror this. If I press Alt X and we Alt scroll over to symmetry, whenever I click, we saw that the wire display showed for the object that we duplicated from, which is incorrect. If we press Alt X and we do it again, we see that it actually shows the wire display for the object correctly the second time. But that first time that it's inaccurate always drove me nuts. 
So if we minimize Blender, let's show how this has been improved. I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. We'll select this edge in front of us. Let's control click on mark in order to bevel. Press one to reset the profile. Tab to go back into object mode and we'll just press alt X and mirror this on the X and then on the Y. So now from here, if we go under operations and we shift click smart apply, we create a clone. So we just go in and do our thing where we grab the top faces, press I to inset, control I to invert, X to delete faces. And from here, even though this object doesn't have to be mirrored, it's a terrible example, I know. But if I were to press Alt X and we go under symmetry and we click on symmetrize, we see that the symmetry wireframe display actually shows correct for the correct object and no longer will show it for the target object which just always disturbed me because seeing the wireframe display made me think that an operational thing was happening with the main object when it definitely shouldn't be happening but just happy to announce that it's finally been resolved and it's no longer an issue Whenever it comes to subdivision in Blender, it's pretty straightforward. If we were to press Control 2, we add a subdivision modifier to this particular mesh. If we look at the modifier panel, we see that the options for the most part remain pretty much the same as they were back in 2.79. However, there are a few additional options that were added even as of this LTS. So if we were to press Control Tab or Control Tilde to bring open our helper, we can look under here and see that the options that are being displayed for our helper are pretty much the same ones that are being displayed with the subdivision modifier. And so with this latest update, if I were to press control tilde and we bring open the helper, we can also see that there's now an advanced tab that has the additional options that have now been added to the subdivision modifier. So previously these, these were not present. So a user had pointed out that Without these being present, it does make their workflow with using subdivision a little more difficult. So we did take some steps towards making it present actually in our helper. So if we look at the modifier and we press control tilde to bring open our helper, we see that no options are currently left behind and users should be able to get the most out of the subdivision modifier whenever it comes to using it with our helper. In one of our most recent updates, we added the ability for users to press Control K and access their HardOps properties and choose an option for something called default profiles, which basically means default profiles are now built into HardOps and whenever you use Shift P inside of Bevel, you can scroll through these custom profiles. However, there was a bug where in the event you chose not to use custom profiles and you had a specially marked folder, there would be issues with recalling those profiles. So just to show that in action, I'm going to uncheck default profiles and we're going to click on the folder and I'm just going to jump over to my profiles. So I have a folder here of all my profiles and my power saves. And so if we look at our preferences, we see that default profiles is off, but I do have a profile folder specified. And now as of this latest update, whenever you go through and you press shift P to begin scrolling through those profiles, you'll be able to recall them without issue. So there's previously an issue with the way that it worked with our settings. However, some refinements were made to it, at least ensure that users are able to easily work with their own profiles, but also access our profiles if need be. For example, I could press control K, remove this directory and just check default profiles, go back in, adjust the bevel, press shift P. And from there begin scrolling through the custom profiles that are available to us through the hop system. So just letting you know that if you were experiencing issues with custom profiles, more than likely it was something on our side, but we have been working to refine it and it should be working now as intended. Press Q, shift click auto smooth in order to get that shaded right. Instead of extending this video with the demo, I figured we could take a brief moment to talk about one specific edge case that I'm sure haunts every user. And that is this particular area right here where you actually have a bevel converging with a smoother surface. So let's control in and make a new file and let's talk about that area. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, press S and Y in order to scale this in. And then I'm just going to add a loop cut down the middle and we're just going to extrude this area out. So let's say we wanted to have a bevel running along this edge. We see that when we begin beveling because of this particular edge, the guidance of this bevel gets a little bit skewed. So getting it to look correct is just a matter of dissolving edges that would give it poor guidance or we could actually bevel this and select these two points and press J to basically put an edge in between them solving this equation 
And in fact, having this geometry placed the way it is, is pretty advantageous for us to just control X and dissolve it. So there's a lot of areas that come up like this in modeling, and there's a lot of different ways you can go about solving them, but I'm just showing a couple of the ones that I use personally. So I'm just gonna select both of these, and we're just gonna press Control B in order to bevel. And we see that this one gave us the result that was discussed previously, and we see that up top, we were given a slightly different result because of the guidance edge that was given to us from us beveling a partial edge. So if I press Control Shift Tab, we can activate vertex snapping, at least on Control. Usually I have snapping off, so that way whenever I press G and Y to move something, snapping only comes up when I press Control and hover over the element I intend to snap to. Just one of my favorite aspects about Blender, and it's do or do not snap with control behavior. So we can take these edges and dissolve them. For this area, we'll just grab this point and this point, press J to combine them. And so, so far so good, right? We can press Alt X and inside of mirror, I'll just press D and we're gonna use symmetry instead of modifier. So that way we can re really mirror this to the other side. And so from here, let's add a bevel. And this is where things get confusing. So I get a lot of questions about how do you make this sort of area work? And there's a lot of ways you can go about it. However, um, let's duplicate this over to the side and let's talk about some options. So first I'm gonna sharpen this, which means that every edge, a value that matters for beveling has been sharpened, basically marked using the settings that we have specified in our control tilde. This also means that if I were to go under bevel and we press L, we could change the limit method for weight. And what this also means is I can select this area, this entire area, and press Q and unmark. And basically, we've now allowed the bevel to work on the areas that it's actually able to and ignore the areas that it's not able to. So if we press Alt X and we mirror it with symmetry, we see that our job is done. So when it comes to beveling this particular area, this is an edge case that even Howard's aware of and we've had talks about in the past where it's just one of those edge cases where you have to be a little bit creative when solving it inside of Blender. So we ha still have our main shape. Let's duplicate it over to the side with Shift D and let's talk about other solutions. So we press Q, we lower our bevel to something reasonable and we see that with our geometry, this is about as reasonable as the bevel is gonna get with the amount of geometry that's present. And we see that it also suffices for this area. I mean, these corners are always going to be a struggle whenever it comes to the bevel. If we press Alt V and we activate wireframe, we could see what kind of struggle that we're actually facing. And we see that this particular edge is just overshooting and then the edge next to it is also overshooting dramatically. So sometimes I will get in and just dissolve an area and begin sliding geometry around in order to kind of alleviate an area. And then from there, I'm able to get even bigger with my bevel. Of course, this requires a little bit more geometry sliding and alleviation, but while this is my least favorite technique, it at least allows me to get to the end of the day and survive a model. So let's talk about this side. The same solutions are still in place. So this area is just too much. We're gonna have to slide things away and just kind of relax this area in order to allow the bevel to do its job. And while this isn't the most effective solution, it's the only one I've been able to find at this time that really works consistently whenever it comes to getting controlled bevels under control or uncontrolled bevels under control, at least until we see other solutions for it. I mean, we could take these two and dissolve them, which will simplify this convergence. And we could also dissolve this, which will simplify this area's convergence. And if we were to press Alt X and mirror symmetrize, we see that, you know, this object looks kind of terrible. Even if we slap a weighted normal on it, because of the amount of compromise we did to the bevel, it does re result in a little bit of fastening. So that isn't actually the best option either. In fact, I would recommend this one as probably the best route. Sometimes you wanna shift over to weight, and this is definitely one of those times in which weight can be a good friend for you. So with this particular area, if we wanted to solve it for a third time a different way, then let's see, I would say, let's remove the bevel. Let's select these two faces, shift tilde, which I have shift tilde map to selecting my boundary loop. And I could just control click mark in order to bevel just this one area. But we do wanna just get rid of that edge in between because it's 
causing something I refer to as netting, where basically edges in between of a face selection get netted whenever there's a selection situation because there's not a such thing as edge selection or edge groups, or else we would just bevel only edges. But instead we have to be crafty with the way that we bevel whenever it comes to Blender. Blender always requires a degree of complexity or a, a degree of creativity in order to really maximize our abilities to use it. Because if you approach it like a another 3D program, you're going to be immensely disappointed, especially when you start trying to map things to be like that other program and you find that it's just not quite the same. So I'm going to control click mark in order to bevel this area. And we can just press Alt X. And this time I'm going to press X for a modifier mirror. And we're going to mirror this to the other side. And let's finally deal with the back. So I'm just going to select all the sides, shift tilde to grab the boundary, control click mark, press one. And there we go. So this is probably Let's undo what we did. Did we always have this be the equal amount of rounding that we have with the rest of this? Let's shift click or let's go through modifier scroll. So there's our first bevel. Here's our second bevel. It's our second bevel that went too far. So let's lower that bevel so we get something a little more reasonable. I am definitely not trying to compromise the flat to bigger um, bevel ratio I have going. And so now on the back, let's just control click, set it to one, and let's alt click sharpen. And this is a much better result. So there's a variety of ways you can go about dealing with this particular edge case. And so I wanted to conclude this video just talking about it. Sorry about ranting so long. And with that, I'll wrap up this video. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you guys next time.